guys, we're going to take a look at how to do some stripes and plaids in Illustrator. So I'm going to open up Illustrator and I have already opened uh, my color palette and that is because we're going to utilize our color palette when we create our stripes and plaids. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new document or start a new document, not open an existing one, sorry. Uh, we're going to keep it letter. And what I want to do first is I want to grab my color palette. Now it's already grouped. If not, you'd have to highlight it. And I'm going to copy Control C. And then Control V just paste it in. <clears throat> now I'm going to make this a little bit smaller just because I'm going to use it as a reference down here. So we're just going to use that as uh, sort of our color fill. Now um, the uh, uh, stripes, plaid, and prints assignment is going to ask for you to do uh, stripes <clears throat> in three colorways, a warm, a cool, and a neutral, and plaids, same thing, warm, a cool, and a neutral. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the rectangle tool to start and create the size of our swatch. Now you're going to want to make it a perfect square and that will make sense when we get to plaids, but just hold shift while you create your rec uh, square and that will make it a perfect square and not a rectangle. I'm just going to do a nice little size swatch right here. And what I would like to do is now I'm going to fill the swatch with what's going to be called our ground color. Now when we refer to something as a ground color in reference to fabrics, that basically just means the background color. Um, so whatever sort of, you know, is you would call the background color is your ground color. And let's start on our warm colors first. Now you don't need to use all warm colors in your warm colorway for your um, stripes, but um, it should be a majority warm. So definitely your ground should be the colorway that you're working in. So let's start with a nice little, maybe pink, I'll use the, the uh, perfect pink color as my ground color. I'm just going to move this guy a little bit closer up so I can zoom in. And what I'd like to do now is to create my stripe pattern. Now there's really two tools that I'm going to use to create my stripe patterns. And what's going to help me is I'm going to click on view and I would like to first have my rulers. And this can allow us to sort of drag out um, guidelines to make sure that our uh, stripes are going to be even because of course we want them to be evenly placed. Now if you want a little bit of extra help, we can come down here and show the grid. And the grid will also help us. So if we're spacing them, you know, however many little boxes apart, that's going to help us quite a bit. Okay. So there's two tools that we're going to use to create our stripe pattern. Um, for wider stripes, you can use the rectangle tool. So let's grab our rectangle tool. And I'm going to just click off. I have this highlighted still, so I'm just going to click off it so it's not selected. And I'm going to go in and just start with my stripes. And since I'm using the rectangle tool, I'm going to go ahead and make some fairly um, fat stripes and I'm going to start let's start right over here so we can get the repeat going and let's make it let's see how wide am I let's see about three nice wide stripe okay now I want to decide what color I want my stripe to be. So I'm going to go back to the eyedropper tool, make sure that this is still selected, and pick my stripe. So let's go with maybe an orange, this orange. Now, what I have is I have the black outline. Now, since I have black in my color palette, that's okay, I can keep it. But if you don't want that black outline, make sure that your stroke is invisible. 
or it has the same color as your fill, either or. I'm gonna just move this in and scoot it, maybe just a little bit. No, well, actually it doesn't matter because we're gonna do a border at the end anyways. Actually, in that case, why don't I make the border of this swatch pink as well? All right, so now we have my one stripe, and to make sure that I get the same size stripe, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. And now what I'd like to do is figure out my placement. How far are they going to be apart? I'm gonna make them even. So if this was about three boxes, I'm gonna make about three boxes um, uh, over. Of course, you can make it wider or smaller. It doesn't matter. You can place it however you want. You can make it real thin like this. But let's make it maybe kind of wide and then maybe we'll do a smaller stripe, a couple smaller, smaller stripes in the middle there. But whatever you're going to do, now you're going to, well, if it's placed where you want it, so let's say I'm going to place it maybe about right there. I'm going to take both of them and copy and that's going to at least give me a placement between the two of them. Now I just have to make sure that they're placed the same distance apart as before. And then there we go, I have my stripes. Now let's say I want to do maybe add a little bit of blue to this. Um, so those are our wide stripes. Now, if I want to do a smaller stripe, a thinner stripe, the line segment tool is actually a really handy tool to use. And what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to grab, so I want a nice blue color, and I'm going to drop it into the stroke, because remember our line is only stroke. Grab my line, and then place my line where I want it. I'm going to hold shift to make sure it goes straight. That will snap it straight, so if I go right or left, it's not going to sort of tilt it. It's just going to go straight down. And then there we have a nice blue line. Let me click off so we can see what it looks like. Just like so. Now if I want it thicker, I can go ahead and make go to the properties. I'm going to just click off this for right now. Remember our properties are right here, so if it's not showing, you can just click on this. And the stroke value will make it a little bit thicker if I so want it to be thicker. Maybe a little something like that. And then of course I can take it and copy and paste it and start to build out my stripes. Oops. Maybe it would have been better if I did another layer. But we're going to just make sure that it's placed where it needs to be, right in the center there. And finish off with our last two. Now maybe what I want is even another real thin little pinstripe of yellow coming down the middle there. So I'm going to select the yellow, drop it in my line, go to my line segment, and we'll place it right in the middle there. And don't be afraid to zoom in. And let's make it just real nice and thin. It's pretty thin right now, but just a little, little hit, just like that. Place it where it needs to go. And once we've done that, we have created our first stripe pattern. Pretty easy, right? So what we're going to do to do our next one is I'm not going to bother building out the whole thing again. I'm going to go ahead and select this whole thing and copy and paste it down. And in fact, why don't I going to cut it out and I'm actually going to do a new layer just to help keep things separate. And we'll bring it out. I'll tile them down nicely, but right for right now, when we're building our stripes, I'm just going to keep it separate. And 
and we can go ahead and start to do a different colorway. So we're gonna do our cool. So let's do a purple background or purple ground. And I'm just gonna select each one of these orange stripes and let's make them blue. Oh, that's quite nice. Now obviously these littler, um, littler, uh, smaller stripes underneath are blue, so they're hard to see right now. Let's see if I can get them. Just gonna move my yellow out of the way so I can isolate my blue. Can. Maybe <laughs> I should have done these first, or at least done a different color, because now they're pretty hard to see, blue against blue. But they're there. And let's just go ahead and I'm have to do a little bit of adjusting, but that's okay. should we do with those? Well, we did a diff sort of different color there, so maybe let's do it. What's going to look nice? Maybe we should make those pink. Drop in the stroke. Now we have to fatten it up again, too. A six point. Let's just double check. What did I do over here? Oh, that's on the other layer. Oh, well, it looks pretty good. And what I'm going to do now is since I sort of had to adjust them a little bit to select them, I'm just going to nudge them back into place. That one's still in the center. And that one's still in the center. Okay, so now let's do our yellow lines. And let's do them, I wonder what the green will look like. Drop it in there. And let's deselect to see what it looks like. Move one into place. So, I don't know, I'm not too wild about it. Maybe let's use um, let's use this tan color. See what that looks like. Move it back into place. That looks a lot better. Now, if you're having trouble nudging it and getting it right in the middle, just zoom in, and then you'll be able to get it right in the middle. There we go. Now, it looks like I did not take the black border off my blue bars, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Actually, let's make it invisible because it'll make it a little bit wider and I think I've made it invisible on the other one, one of the same size. And just for consistency, let's make this, there we go. So there's our cool colorway. So already done with cool and warm. Let's go ahead and just do our last colorway and I'll do it again on another layer. copy, but I cut. Let's cut. 
copy. And paste. And let's go ahead and what shall we do? Let's so do this nice color here. Let's zoom in. And let's select our bars. I'm going to use maybe that nice dark coconut color. Make the border invisible. And let's make <clears throat> looks like I'm going to move over these guys again just so it's easier to select that stripe again if you wanted to make this a little bit easier um, do the layers on uh, do the um, smaller stripes that go on top of the other ones on another layer and you won't have to do this oops And one more. Now, what shall we do? How about, I haven't used this green yet. This will look a lot better here. And we can't forget to up the stroke. Yeah, that looks much nicer. Now let's put uh, color our little lines. And let's see, well, we've used all the, well, yeah, we've used all the colors. Um, maybe I'll do a little bit of blue too. So I have a little, a little bit of blue in all of them. And this one's 0.5. And since they're all highlighted, I can just start nudging them right back into place. It looks like I moved some out a little bit farther, so let's just go ahead and nudge them all back into place. Perfect. Okay, so there are my three colorways. So to finalize this, I'm gonna unlock, so I have one on each layer, I'm gonna put these guys down here, and I want to go ahead and uh, group these guys. So I'm gonna group each one, so none of my little lines and everything get shift, uh, shifted out of place. And I'm just highlighting the whole swatch and hitting Control G, which is our grouping shortcut. You, of course, can go to Object Group or right click and hit Group. It's all up to you. And um, what I want to do now is, now that I have them all, um, I can sort of tile them nicely, find a, a nice arrangement for them. Maybe a nice little tiling like this. I want this guy to be on top of there so I can sort of tile it out. Bring it in. Always leave about a half inch of white space between um, your elements and the edge of the paper. Um, it looks better that way and it will definitely print better that way. So printers a lot of times don't have the ability to go all the way to the edge. They have about a half inch where they can't really print at the edge. So to be safe, to make sure your whole thing is gonna be printed, um, make sure that you uh, go ahead and leave that half an inch right there. So here we have um, a nice little tiling, our little prints, and you, of course, you know, if you want to do something like this or, you know, however you want to arrange them, that's going to be up to you. Uh, perfectly fine. 
But what we're going to do is um, once we have them placed where we want them, I'm going to go ahead and make um, small little tiles to show what goes in them. So actually, let, let me select all of them and kind of just shift them down a little bit. So I'm going to put some color chips up here and here for these two colors and then the cool colors down here. And we'll typically see this, actually let me just even it out on the page as well. See there's four squares over here and three squares over here. So that's how the grid is good. It lets you know um, really how you're going to get it. So I'm going to, I have one, two, three, four colors in this one. So I'm going to go ahead and grab, um, let's do rectangles this time, doesn't really matter. And I'm going to make four little color chips just by copying, making one and then copying and pasting the rest. And, and again, I'm going to put these on top, but I'm just going to arrange them here for, for time being. Make sure they're all nicely spaced. Then I'm going to go ahead and um, use my eyedropper tool to fill in each one from the colors that I used in my color palette. So quick and easy. need to do the labeling on here. A lot of times people will do it with the names and everything, but uh, since we already have our color palette, we don't need to do that. So I'm going to group them. And then I'm just going to put them right up here in the center. And that looks pretty good. Now let's copy and paste them. We will go ahead, there we go, get aligned and centered. And we can do the color chips for here. So I'm just going to bring these guys up so I'm not going up and down and up and down. Um, I'm going to need to ungroup them to do them individually. One more. Let's center that underneath here. Ungroup it. And there we have our stripe. So hopefully that was uh, pretty good, fast and easy for you. Now the last thing that you might want to do, and um, so a lot of times you can get, if you're not really careful, you might have a little bit longer, it might be a little rough on these edges here. But there's a quick and easy way to clean that edge up. So I'm gonna kind of zoom in and let's go back to layer one and what I'm gonna do okay nothing is selected good I'm going to make the fill invisible and the black in the outline I'm gonna go back to my square here I'm gonna go ahead and fill in basically trace over the square that I have 
Now this has gone underneath this watch, remember, because we're on a layer below it. So um, remember, you can always do this on different layers. You want it to be on top of whatever swatch you're being, but uh, you're doing, because you want it to cover these ends up here. And I'm just going to go to properties and maybe bump up the thickness of this stroke a, just a wee bit. And you see what we get is just a nice clean border and it's going to clean up any edges or any unevenness that we might have around there. So I'm going to copy, because these should all be the same size, and then go on layer three. And this one will sit right here. And if I'm worried about what this is going to do, because I need to go under here and over here, Remember, I group this, so what I can do is I can cut the whole thing out and put it on its own layer, and then I can just drag and drop it to the right position. So I want this guy to be underneath this, but over that. Okay, fantastic. Let's drop them down a little bit. And I can grab one of these, copy it, put it on my layer four. and get that nice border for all of them. Just go a little down and a little over. Maybe a little bit more over. There we go. So done, done with stripes. Now, once we have the stripes done, I'm gonna make maybe a little bit this get a little bit more space in between here. Let's get a nice little little bit of a space between there. Now, once we've done the stripes, the plaids are really easy. Um, we are going to utilize our stripes for the plaids, so I don't need to be building colors anymore. So at this point, I can delete my color palette. So I'm going to use the same chips and pretty much everything I've done here just to create the plaids. Actually, why don't I going to just move this up a little bit. So we have nice, about, about the same amount of space down here for our plaids. And I'm going to start here, copy, and paste one of my um, stripe patterns. And I'm actually going to paste two of them, okay? So I have my two um, stripe patterns here. Now what I'm gonna do is I, for each one, I'm gonna select the whole thing, go to properties, and reduce the opacity to 50%. Okay, same thing over here. And we can just type in 50 if you don't like the scroll wall bar, okay? Now what I'm going to do is going to hold shift and rotate it onto its side. I hold shift just because um, it makes it a little bit better uh, or easier to snap to the perfect dimensions that I want. And I'm going to layer that on top of my other um, piece right here. It's a little washed out, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this out and I'm actually going to up the opacity to my one of my base layers, maybe to about 75%. And this way we'll get a little bit more richness. And then there we go. We got a beautiful um, plaid pattern from our stripe. And it should be, as you see, it's a little bit more rich in the center here. And that's exactly the way it, it should be because that's exactly the way um, uh, it's going to sort of weave into each other. So now that we have that, I can go ahead and do the same thing for my other ones. Don't be afraid to go off the page if you need a little bit of space working. Actually, before I do that, why don't I group this guy so it's going to be easy for me. And then let's work on a new layer, right? Layers are our friends. So I should 
should have two. There we go. Excellent. And let's go. And this one, I'm going to reduce to 50. And you guys can play around with your opacities too if it's looking a little washed out for you. You do want to see both. So if you're going to tile it, we might have to do 100 on the bottom. And that'll give it nice and rich, and that will also prevent it from being able to see through like that. So actually, let's try that out. I'm going to go back here, ungroup. So I want the same for each one. I'm just going to up that opacity. Beep. It gives us a very nice, very nice color. You might like it a little bit more washed out. No, if that's if you like it a little bit lighter and you don't want it to see through, just go ahead and make a white square, a white solid square with a white fill, and then put it underneath, and then you won't have any problems. And put that right there. And there we go. All right, let's group it. Place it. And let's make all these guys align nicely. So you know what, I can use these same color chips. These are the same color chips for this one and that one, so I don't see why I can't just use both. I'll just drop them down a little bit. So this will be for both of them. Center it a little bit. There we go. And we got one more to do, but again, Pretty quick and easy, right? Let's just put it on its own layer. So I don't have any issues. it into place and group it and is this layer is it yeah okay good just place this down here okay now I did the borders here so I want to Go ahead and recreate my borders. Making sure they're on the right layers. I don't need a drop down of my layers. to do is just maybe raise up these guys, all these guys, just a bit, so I have room at the bottom for my swatches. So I'm going to push those up. These guys will go a little bit pushed up too. Go 
ahead and place them. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And let's zoom in, make sure everything's all kind of nice. We got even spacing and la la la. This guy could probably go shift it over to just squeech. All right, pretty good. So any way that you want to do it, any way you want to lay it out, that's fine. This is just one option. Um, if you want to throw in a like, drop shadow like we did in the, the flats or whatever, you can do that as well. Um, but for all intents and purposes, pretty quick and easy, especially once you get to the plaids. The plaids are just a lot of copy and pasting. And then once you are finished, these guys got to be nudged up a little bit more just to match the bottom. If I have the room to do it, I'll do it. Oops. Now, if you're kind of running out of room, just remember that, so say like everything is like kind of the way you want it or maybe just close to the way that you want it, but it's just too big. So say I want this whole thing, but I just, I want a little bit more room. I can go and select everything by um, using my black arrow and just, I just clicked and dragged to select everything. You can also use the shortcut control A, um, that's con uh, control all or select all. And now everything is selected, so I'm going to hold shift to constrain proportions and just nudge it down. And it gives me the same thing, but a little bit more room to work with and to play around with. So again, if you're kind of running into those, you know, into your margins and it's uh, not really working out so well, um, you can just do that and make it just everything just a little bit smaller so it fits on your page just a little bit better. Okay. So there you go. So once you're at this point, you're going to go to export. Remember, if you're in the middle of everything, you want to save as and save as a .ai. But if you're done, you're going to go to export, export as, and you're going to export as a JPEG. And you're going to export as your name, stripes. Let's make it all one word. And you know, stri stripes, I'll get the point. Just <laughs> you know, stripes and plaids. You don't need super long uh, file names. And then you're going to export it to your um, flash drive. And you're done. Um, so there you go. So hopefully this is good, uh, nice and quick and easy. Oh, I just realized that, see how did this spot is a little bit bigger than this spot? So I'm going to have to grab that and move it up a little bit. I don't want anything uneven. It's always good to sort of, um, I always like to, <laughs> you know, double check, but you know, like go do something else for, you know, five, 10 minutes and then go back and look at it too. Um, it always seems like once you're out of, you know, your, uh, then of course we'd have to save it again. Uh, what's your sort of, if you take a little break, and then come back to it. Sometimes little details like that, it's always so important to sort of just step back from your work, whether it's taking a break or just sort of stepping back and, and, and you know, staring at it for a minute, um, whatever it is, um, so important. Okay, guys, so hopefully this was a nice, quick, easy, and fun exercise. And uh, next we're going to do prints, which is a little bit more complicated than stripes and plaids, but it's more fun because prints are more fun as well. I mean, you know, stripes and plaids are awful fun, uh, but prints, I don't know, I love prints. Um, so we're gonna do that and we're gonna round up uh, out our sort of fabric rendering assignment with um, uh, uh, developing some prints in Illustrator. So I'll see you then, bye-bye.